the XFL draft. When is that happening in 2020? I'll let you guys know on my potential timeline for when they'll do that draft. And another thing we can look at next is the XFL's players and how they're being assessed after being draft or little, 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 blah, <laughs> being picked up by the NFL. Man, that was that was crazy. Let's talk about it. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me here once again for XFL Talk. This is your boy, Desmond Dukes. Sorry about that whole beginning thing. It was all kind of just, uh, it was crazy. <laughs> a little bit of a, a mistake on my end. But nevertheless, we got a few things that we want to talk about here today. And one of the main things is the XFL draft. Now, the XFL draft, was done back in 2019 going into the 2020 season. Now that took place on October 15th and 16th of those dates in which they were conducted by conference calls from uh, from the various agents and coaches and all of that as they picked the players that were in that draft pool. Now, the thing is, is now that the 2021 season is going to be coming up, and at least that's what they're pushing for anyway. As far as we know, 2021 is that target springtime uh, season for the league to relaunch again for what they call 3.0. So with that in mind, the main thing that people want to know is how is the draft going to be this year? I'm not sure. More than likely, it'll probably be another closed session draft just like how the NFL was, except theirs was more open to the public, but it'll be more closed um, closed off, and it will probably be phone conferences as they did the first time around. Now, I do not believe that it will be in October of this year because with everything going on after you know the purchase and everything being final in the XFL, now there's that time of making sure that they actually have um, to start scouting for players that's still in the college ranks, looking at some of these NFL players that's on the practice the practice squad, which isn't getting much play time really at all, and they really are hungry to get in there and play. So prediction-wise, you could see there's going to be a lot of things happening before – the uh, before the draft could even take place. So October is kind of close right now. I know they're going to be pushing really hard to try and get everything going, but I don't see October as being that time anymore. Um, if I had to take a guess, I would probably say, in my prediction, I'm going to go with December. Like the first week of December, the end of November, sometime after Thanksgiving. That way they have a little bit more time, get everything back to where it needs to be, getting, you know, checking up on players and rosters and all that stuff. Because right now college doesn't really have anything going on. So they're already scouting some of those guys. And in the NFL, right now with them doing all of their training camps and now they're having to cut people during those camps, Now they can start eyeing those people. So I think what they're doing is that they're going to wait until everything is done as far as, you know, how many players are getting cut from such team in the NFL or such teams in the NFL. And then using that to get those players to persuade those players to come play in the XFL during their season. So at the earliest, if they can't do the like, maybe the first week of December, if they can't do that, I have to say at probably the earliest that they could do it is probably the middle of November, right before Thanksgiving. Cause you don't want to do anything like right at holiday time. That's the worst time to be wanting to do something like that. So I think if you do it either before or after Thanksgiving, 
I think those are those are the windows that you got to work with. Now, if I had it my way, I'd probably say probably like November. I would say middle of the week in November, probably somewhere around like the 12th and 13th, you know, just keep it those same two days as far as picking up guys for the draft. It may only, it may only need to be one day. It may only need to be one day. And then of course it's going to be going on all day. And XFL really did a good job with their previous draft when new drafts were happening as far as people getting getting signed and put on specific teams they really put it out there on their social media channels so that everybody knew and was up to date on what those players do i don't see that changing i think that's going to stay the same as far as what they'll do getting it out social media wise so people of and lots of fans are invested in wanting to know who's going where so you may even see some changes. Maybe some players get traded to another team. You know, you might have somebody from the Houston Roughnecks traded over to the to the Vipers. Who knows? Um, and then you have to look at the situation too. Um, the Tampa Bay Vipers still may be moving to Orlando. And then you have the Dallas Renegades, and they may be moving to Arlington. So it's... It's it's a lot going on right now, with especially with these teams. So I think everything will come into shape, but that's the, that's my predictions on that. I do believe that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen between the beginning and the middle of November, uh, or it could happen at the first week, maybe, maybe the second week of December, because you don't want to wait too long because now, you know, they get drafted. They need to get to their location. Now they need to start the beginning of their training camp with the with their XFL players and playing with their team. And, you know, this past year, they didn't have a whole lot of time, maybe a couple of months, like three, four months, maybe. That's all they had. Um, so now, you know, depending on when they start, which is – which will probably be February again if they don't decide to push it to March. If they push it to March, that gives them a little extra time to get the players ready, to get them trained, especially new players, so that they they understand the the ecosystem in which they're going to be in, and the 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 way the 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 uh, playbooks are going to be ran, the way the coaches is going to be, you know, structuring their their D lines and O lines. I mean, this is so many different things to take in as far as that goes. But that's that's my prediction. You're looking at, you know, early to middle of November. At the latest, I would say December, early early December, possibly the first week. So, uh, you guys, let me know what you think on that, and uh, you know, do you, when do you think? the XFL will start up a draft again because October honestly is not looking likely unless they can pull that off with everything else going on. I mean, they've already got too many hands in the basket as it is trying to get everything figured out. So I don't think they need to jump the gun and start trying to go into that process of drafting, you know, when they still have a lot of red tape to go through. So you guys let me know what you guys think on that. That is something that, I'm actually very, very curious about, and you guys, you know, just tell me what you think. Um, next order of business is the assessment. Now, we know that a lot of XFL players did get drafted to the NFL or drafted or signed to the NFL. We know Kenny Robinson, who played a uh, safety for the, uh, for the St. Louis Battlehawks. He was actually one of the first few Actually, yeah. In fact, he was the first and probably only guy that I can think of that was actually put in the draft pool um, because he was still in college, technically was still in college at the time. So, so that's a good thing to see. And we're now up to, I believe it's 33 to 34 players from the XFL. Now, some XFL players that originally 
had tryouts at some of these NFL teams did not make the cut and they were cut again from the NFL. Now it happens. I'm sure they're not frustrated. Well, they're probably a little frustrated that they didn't, you know, they didn't do as well, but they're not that frustrated because they still have a home in the XFL in which they can increase and home in their craft just that little bit more, get some more reps in. And then maybe, you know, the next time around they can, they can pull off something really, really awesome and get into the NFL. But, but nevertheless, very few have been have been uh, have been cut, but so far the majority of them have done well. Take uh, Jordan Tayamu, who was the quarterback for the St. Louis BattleHawks. Now he was signed to the uh, to the Kansas City Chiefs as a backup quarterback, and in the last couple of training camps that they've had so far over in uh, the Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs area. We've heard from their backup quarterback. We've even heard from Andy Reid, the head coach of the Chiefs himself, that they're right now they are really high and really um, excited for Jordan Tayamu. They said he's done well. He's done phenomenal. He's he's really picked up on a lot of what what they do and their style of play, which is a testament to how Jordan Tayamu is doing. Um, I'm actually curious to hear what. Patrick Mahomes has to say about Jordan Tayamu, knowing that, you know, he came from the XFL um, and just kind of getting his thoughts on what, you know, he thinks of what he even thinks of the XFL and how these guys are coming into the NFL and getting these opportunities. Um, we already know that uh, Philip Walker, AKA PJ Walker, <laughs> Um, is now playing for the Carolina Panthers as the backup for Teddy Bridgewater. Now, with him being probably the highest signee for an XFL uh, player, um, he's actually playing second um, in the quarterback rankings of the uh, Carolina Panthers. Jordan Tayamu, he's – probably third or fourth or something like that. I'm not sure. Excuse me. So this is a great thing. And they've been saying that Philip Walker has been doing excellent. He's been doing a really good job. He's really getting in, you know, that time in the training camps and he's, he's doing well. Uh, Matt rule, who was his former coach when he played for temple has been really, really high. And then this is something that is very interesting. Um, Cam Phillips, who I had been praising as one of the best wide receivers in the XFL. Um, he actually is now getting a tryout with the Carolina Panthers because the Carolina Panthers, as of right now, have three re wide receivers down with injuries. So with them needing more wide receivers, Cam Phillips was able to come right in and he's getting a tryout opportunity. And I think once they see the dynamic with, you know, Cam Phillips and, and uh, Philip Walker, I think that's going to be some some magic that Matt Rule is going to see, and he's more than likely going to love it. Those two, P.J. Walker had Cam Phillips as his main target throughout the entire time with the, with the Houston Roughnecks, and they have done an absolutely tremendous job together, just their dynamic, their chemistry, how they flow out there on that gridiron. They do such a great job together, and they really – and it shows because, you know, along with everybody on, you know, the defense and the offense really putting in the work there in Houston, um, that team was able to be 5-0 and o before the pandemic hit and everything, all of operations shut down. So that's just, you know, a couple of them. Um, Parham, who was, the, um, who was the wide receiver, the tall wide receiver, I think he's like 6'8". 6'9", six, 6'9", nine, six, nine wide receiver for the Dallas Renegades. And they said he's, he's working out pretty good um, where he's at. And I do believe that, uh, let me see, because Parham, he went to, give me a second to look this up. Because I know those guys did, uh, he's, he's doing incredibly well with the team that he's with.
Oops. Uh, so, um, but we did find out it shows on here, uh, Derek Nichols, who was, um, who was the DB for the Roughnecks. He also got signed and he is with the Arizona Cardinals. So that's a good thing. Um, where did I see Parham? Okay, there it is. Uh, for the for the New York Giants. <laughs> so he's gonna be he's he's gonna be out there with the New York Giants. So there you go. Parham is getting an opportunity with those guys. But they said he's doing well. You know, this this is this is a great thing for the XFL because when they get great feedback from NFL players, that just goes to show you what the XFL has been doing right. And what the ex what the NFL sees within these XFL players. And it's a true testament to what they've done and, and the work that these that these players put into in the XFL to get to where they are now. Cause it's every every player's dream in the XFL to probably go in go either back into the NFL or to go into the NFL. And they work really hard. They, you know, they do what they need to do in the XFL, build up you know, build up that reputation, um, build up their stock a little bit. So that way when they get seen by, cause you know, the NFL is always watching. They're always watching. There's even some players from, you know, that have been watching it. That's being eyed on by the CFL, which is the Canadian football league. So you have all these intricate things that are, that are going right for the XFL. And it's a true Testament to what the XFL can do. Now, like I said, there were 32 players, 32 to 33 players right now that are getting NFL tryouts. But we know at least seven of them, at least seven of them um, did not make the cut, which is unfortunate because it does happen. So, but, but everybody that is succeeding right now, that is, that is huge. That is huge. And we hope to one day, you know, be in a glitz and glamour. Now, in Jordan Tayamu's case, I don't know how well or when he's even going to get an opportunity. Um, I think for him being that far back um, as a backup quarterback, because I'm pretty sure they have at least a couple of them already for, um, for backup quarterback. So he's not like the second one in. I believe he's third, possibly fourth. But nevertheless, I mean, Patrick Mahomes has signed a deal to be with the Chiefs as their main guy for the next 10 years. I, I don't know about Jordan Tayamu getting an opportunity if he continues to be healthy and he's in there. Now, when the preseason eventually starts back up, you know, obviously not this season of the NFL, but maybe in the later seasons, he'll probably get some reps in that way, which, you know, which would be good, but it would be in the preseason. But when it comes to the regular season, unless Mahomes and like two other ones get hurt, he may not really see any action. And I kind of feel bad for him because he's such a great quarterback and what he's done with St. Louis. And I feel that he is not going to get those reps in because he's going to be on the bench a lot. And he was he was he was the star of St. Louis. If I was him, I would have stayed. I would have stayed in St. Louis at least another year or two. I mean, he's only 22, 23 years old. The dude's got plenty of time. So if he served another one or two years in the XFL, it would it would have just helped his stock even more getting in the NFL. And maybe not with the Chiefs, but somebody would have seen him as either a backup behind the main quarterback or be the main quarterback. So there's definitely something there. I just, I just feel bad that it was, you know, he's so far back and that he may not get the time and the reps in. Um, Cardell Jones, unfortunately did not get a tryout 
at all. Um, so more than likely, he's going to continue to play for D.C. probably another year. When he first started, those first couple games, he was white hot. He was about as hot as P.J. Walker. But then by the third and fourth games, he kind of just dipped off. I don't know what happened, but, you know, it's – I still believe he deserves an opportunity. He absolutely deserves an opportunity. But I think just getting another rep in – on the XFL as the DC defenders main quarterback and really turning those last couple of weeks around for him to put it in the positive. I think that would be a great, great thing, but you guys let me know what you think. What XFL players did that did not get picked up. Do you feel should have gotten picked up by the NFL? And what do you guys, how do you guys feel about the assessment of what some of these NFL um players and coaches and staff are saying about some of these XFL players. You guys let me know what you guys think of those down below. Well, anyway, um, that's all I got this time. Thank you guys so much. Sorry about the screwed up intro and everything. <laughs> it's just one of those things that happens. But, you know, XFL is getting ready. Everybody's getting ready. Everything's looking good. Um, make sure you guys go to um, Danny Garcia's uh, Twitter handle. And that's a good way to keep up with a lot of the things that's happening in the XFL. Uh, you can even look up Jeffrey Pollock and even Dwayne Rock Johnson. So you have three people right there that will keep you guys in the loop on everything that's happening in the XFL. But uh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel and hit that like button. And uh, turn on that bell for all notifications. And you guys take care. Have a wonderfully good night.